Hey guys, it's Will from Creations by Will, and today I'm visiting David Roost from Roost Made here in sunny San Diego, California. So let's go check out his shop and see what he's got going on here. Hey, how's it going? Welcome to my garage. This is Roost Made. So here we are in the garage, two car garage. Um, over here we've got the table saw, the outfeed table, and the uh, router set up. Um, and then over here is sort of the, the big beast, kind of the mobile tool station with um, the dust collection on the shop vac, the cyclone filter over there, everything hooked up through these ports right here. So you can sort of choose whether it's going to the spindle sander or the bandsaw, the planer, the dust collection just on a tool or over for the chop saw. This has a four foot by eight foot footprint, uh, just a basically a sheet of plywood. Um, and I, one of the things I noticed, because I watched every YouTube video about mobile tool stations like this, and everybody puts the planer on top mm -hmm. every single time. And I'm like, you don't need it on top. Like, and space here is uh, uh, very, very tight. So I put it underneath. And so this works out great. This is the um, DeWalt 13 inch, I believe. Yeah, the 13 inch. I added this board right here because this only goes down to um, one inch. And so with this sort of elevated um, surface, now I can plane all the way down to as fine as I need to. Um, so this is all set up with the dust collection. I've got lights under here, so at night everything glows and it's kind of fun. Up on top, we have the um, downdraft table. Um, and then in this spot, you'll notice this piece of acrylic, which might seem a little random, but it's great if you have to cut paper because there's a light underneath. And so if you're slicing, you can see the light shining through the paper and you can get the most perfect cut if you're making, I, I make my own stickers, my own cards, things like that for my business. So this really comes in handy. So this pulls out and then the Craig jig fits right in here. <laughs> there we go. And so this is already flush with the table. Um, we've got the chop saw here. Uh, I make most of my cuts at 90 degrees. So I've, I've built this little wall here and I can suck the dust from behind it. This works really, really well because this is the tool that makes the, the most dust, it flies everywhere. But with this wall, it actually um, captures most of it. Then we've got a fence right here with an adjustable stop block, which really comes in handy for repetitive cuts. Okay, so over here we've got uh, my wood storage rack. Uh, I like to do a lot of work with hardwood pallets, which are surprisingly hard to find, but they do exist. Um, so we've got all this organized here. I've got these little little bungees, which are really helpful for earthquakes here in California. And I don't want this to fall over and hurt my dog or anybody. <laughs> um, we've got the clamp storage right here. Um, down here, I keep the compressor, which is great because it really cuts down on the noise. And then you just got your hose uh, fed right through the counter. Uh, over here, is where I do all my web development work for my day job. So I've got my setup right here in the garage, and this whole thing is all mobile. This is actually an old workbench, uh, which works out great. All right, so every day it's me and Cooper. Come here, boy. Come here. Sit. Cooper, sit. Cooper, sit. Good boy. So this is my boy, Cooper. He lives out here with me in the garage, and uh, his home is right here actually in the outfeed table. Cooper, go to your bed. Cooper, go to your bed. Go to your bed. So um, underneath the outfeed table, uh, I opened it up and threw a cushion in there. And uh, so this is where Cooper sleeps. <laughs> and this is where I tuck him in every night. So this is uh, an American elm. And we salvaged this from a tree here in San Diego, actually at my sister's house. Um, it had been dead for maybe 20 years and the tree was probably about 70 years old. Um, and they were just gonna get rid of it and send it to the landfill. And um, 
we came in and were able to salvage it and mill it up into this into these big slabs. So we've got one inch, two inch, three inch slabs. And this was one of the first projects I made with it. And you can really see the color that just pops out. Um, it's got this great interlocking grain, um, wonderful chatoyant sometimes. And uh, it's just like a beautiful reddish brown. So you said you have slabs of it. Can you show us your, your wood pile? Yeah, absolutely. Let's check it out. So uh, here are the slabs. This is the rest of the tree. Uh, usually I keep this uh, rolling cover over it for, um, to protect it from the sun and, and mostly from the rain. But it doesn't rain that much here <laughs> in San Diego. So this is the tree. This is the first uh, time I've ever had an opportunity to work with, with, with slabs like this and really witness the entire process from tree to finished wood project which is a really satisfying experience, um, more than I ever really expected, because you see it go through this whole transformation. Um, and some people will look at this and be like, oh, this is disgusting, ugly, it, the wood must be terrible, let's get rid of it. And then you see the what, it's, what it's capable of when you see a, a charcuterie board like that, and you see this gorgeous red, reddish brown pop out, and this like wonderful grain, and so, that's what I love. I like finding hidden treasures. Um, I prefer not to go to the store and just buy hardwood. I prefer to either find it or salvage it or, or use pallets or something like that. Um, because it's out there uh, and there's always, there's always wood that you can find that, that might be surprisingly beautiful. When did you realize you wanted to be a woodworker? I didn't realize I wanted to be until a couple years ago, but I've been doing it <laughs> for a long time. Um, and uh, I think it started when I was about maybe like 14 or 15. Um, I would come into the garage and just play around. You know, sort of this creative space that I could build things and hammer nails and experiment with, with tools. And um, I, I think it originated because I wanted uh, a subwoofer enclosure for my car okay for my truck when I was when I was a kid so instead of buying one you, you built yeah one. and so I built one because I had this little truck and I wanted a big subwoofer and they didn't really make one so I had to make a custom thing so are you self-taught or was there someone when you were younger there to teach you how to woodwork um pretty much all self-taught nice. um whenever there's something I don't know often I'll just go read about it online but uh, for the most part pretty much all self-taught a lot of trial and error my practice to doing some things might be a little bit different than than yours because mm -hmm. I, I everyone know. has their own techniques. Right? Yeah, exactly. Um, but I think I think I've asked for a tool for pretty much like every birthday and Christmas since I was like 14. So uh, it's it should be pretty easy to buy me a gift. All you have to do is go to Home Depot and just pick <laughs> just anything. Pick, out. pick anything. Or give me a gift card, right? Yeah, <laughs> give me like a. a a, a little speed square and I'll be happy, you know? Yeah. So I'm really passionate about empowering people to work with their hands again. Mm -hmm. I really want to see people putting the phones down, getting, moving away from the screens and just going outside, going in the garage, making something yourself out of wood or cooking something yourself out of ingredients, not just buying it. Mm -hmm. So I really am passionate about that. I'm also really passionate about the environment and I've always wanted to do something to make a difference. And so I reached, I thought about like, what are the issues I'm most passionate about? And climate change was at the top of the list. And so I found this company, um, Eden Reforestation, they're a nonprofit uh, based in California. And they plant trees all over the world and they do reforestation. And I was like, hey. oh my God, this is perfect because I love trees. <laughs> They plant trees, it's good for the environment. I'm a woodworker, you know, it just felt like the perfect fit. It felt very authentic to me and like what I care about and what I stand for. So I reached out to them and they were all about it. Um, and so we've worked out a deal with them where for every time I sell any product, uh, three trees are planted That's somewhere awesome. in the world. That's really cool. Yeah, and so it's it's been pretty satisfying to know that 
I started this tiny little business and it's actually doing good in the world. And, and helping regrow the deforestation areas. Yeah, yeah. Are, are there any specific areas you're focusing on for, for de deforestation? Yeah, so they go to the parts of the world that have been the most impacted by deforestation, especially areas where um, it's harmed people. You know, because when you lose the trees because they clear it out for agriculture, then the, the, the land becomes dry, so dry you can't even do anything on it, you can't even farm on it. Um, the animals go away and the vegetation goes away. So they try to find places like that where people have been impacted. And what they do that's really special about this company is they hire the local villagers to plant the trees. Okay. So they're not just going out and planting and trees, trees are they're helping the economy. creating jobs and doing something good for the environment. And another side benefit is um, they hire a lot of women too. Cool. In some of these third world countries, it might be more difficult for women to find jobs. And now they have a way of being a provider by planting trees with this company. That's cool. That's so really cool. I'm really, really excited to be, I'm, I'm really honored to be a partner with them. You're, you're working with the Eden Project to give back by planting trees all over the world in areas that have been impacted by deforestation. What's the result of that so far? So we opened for business in February and okay. at the end of quarter one, so really only two months um, for us, we, uh, the business resulted in enough trees being planted that 36 tons of CO2 will be pulled from the atmosphere by those trees. Um, that's really cool. So that's, that's, that's a big impact. Yeah, that's, it's pretty cool um, to know that it's actually making a difference. Um, and it's also really cool to have created a brand that's very personal to me um, and then to hear from customers that my messages resonate with them. Absolutely. Um, I try to engage my customers. I reach out to every single person uh, who buys from me and start a conversation. And Which is exactly how we met. <laughs> yeah, that's it, exactly how we met. Um, uh, David came to my, uh, my grand opening at, the, at the, the store in La Jolla and he actually brought by a can of roost made for me to try out. That's how we actually met. Yeah. It's well, actually, we met earlier that day at the farmer's market. At the farmer's yeah. market. And then I invited you to come yes, out over to the gallery. Yeah. <laughs> that was funny. Um, so good old networking. <laughs> so so moving forward with, with roost made, uh -huh. what are your plans for the future? Where do you see your roost made in the future and the industry that you're working in? We currently have the organic wood wax that um, I've released. My next product is going to be an organic cutting board oil that's going to come out here shortly. Um, I'm really excited about that. I'm going to move into the Amazon world to make that easier for the customers to get a hold of, of my products. I know I buy everything on Amazon. Um, I think I'm going to start moving into retail. Um, and then the other thing I want to do is start creating content where I'm actually helping teach people how to build things nice. um, awesome. as a, an extension of empowering you to work with your hands, I get people messaging me all the time like, oh, how did you make this? Or how did you make that? And I, I'm, I'm very excited to Study actually, tutorials. yeah, actually yeah. help people learn how to do stuff because um, it's not as hard as you think. <laughs> you know, I, I have people sometimes come over, friends, and it's like, hey, come over with a project and let's build it together. And I'll Absolutely. show them how to do it. And they're like, wow, that was like, not that hard. And also really fun and when you see somebody make my friend Erica came over and she made this really cool triangle shelf for her wall very like cool modern thing um, seeing the way that that she looked at it afterwards was so cool it was almost like she had this sense of empowerment because she created something with her own hands one of the challenges I had uh, starting my business other than coming up with an idea that, that resonated with me um, was just my whole branding. Um, the creative challenge of, of coming up with my own logo, a logo that represented me and like who I am and like what I stand for, but then also finding a succinct way to say what I stand for and, and who I am um, and to create a brand that reflects those values. So creating that and figuring out those values at the same time was really uh, one of the hardest parts um, because you know I really wanted people to I wanted to start with the why like why am I doing this why does this business exist 
be able to communicate that effectively and then say, and we accomplish that by selling this product. So it's not just product, 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 it's this is what we stand for, this is how we think, and if you think like us, well then great, here's a great product for you. You might like it. We at Roostmade, we're makers, we're woodworkers, and we exist to support the woodworkers and the makers. Our purpose is to empower people to work with their hands again. We accomplish that through making an organic wood finish. This is uh, the Roostmade organic wood wax. Um, basically a pri proprietary blend of oils and waxes. Um, it is a great way of finishing and protecting and finishing and protecting wood. Um, all plant-based, all organic ingredients, all natural, um, very safe to use. It's really easy on the hands. There's no harsh fumes, anything like that. So you can use it for woodworking projects or you can use it to um, maintain and moisturize and protect your cutting boards. It's food safe, all FDA approved, food safe ingredients, um, and it smells great too. So here's the finished product. You want to just saturate the wood as much as you can with this oil and wax because um, water is the enemy for cutting boards. So um, this stuff will work its way in there pretty deep. You buff it off and then you know you can wash it with soap and water, let it air dry and just reapply as needed anytime the wood gets dry. Um, for some people that'll be once every couple months. To some people wash their cutting boards really harshly so maybe you do it every, uh, every couple weeks. But it's a great finish. It uh, feels really nice on the hands. My hands now are nice and moisturized just from just rubbing this in. Um, and it's really kind of fun to develop a relationship with, with the cutting board and, and work it in there and sort of get to know this piece that you've, you've been working so with. So how can people find you now? You have a website, um, you're on social media. Where, where can people find your products if they want to try it out? So our website is roostmade.co and you can find us on social media at Roostmade. Um, I'm the most active on Instagram, but also, you know, we're on YouTube and Facebook and, um, you know, just kind of getting started here, but, but it's been fun. Um, awesome. And I will also include a link down in the description of this video of where their website is and where you can see them as well. Mm -hmm.